Hello everyone and welcome to this new video on feature scaling. Today we will learn about the difference between normalization and standardization. Let's go ahead and get started. So feature scaling is an important task or step that we do prior to training of any machine learning models. And the objective is to ensure that all features that we have in our data have the same scale. So let's take a look at the practical example. Let's assume that here I have raw original data set and this data set contains three columns. These are interest rates, employment score, and S&P 500. So if you guys kind of scan through the data, you would notice that the range or the scale of that data is just completely different. Interest rates here, if you take a look at that quick stat or the statistical summary about my data, you will notice that the minimum value here of the interest rates is between 1.5 and the maximum is around three. If you check out the employment, which is again, this is not employment uh, percentage per se, it's an employment score, just score that indicates how powerful the stock market is, how strong it is. So if you check out the employment, you will note that the minimum is 40 and the maximum is 70, and the S&P 500 between $1,800 and $3,000. So basically, if I decided to go and train and are an AI model or a machine learning model basically to, with this data, I need to make sure that all the data sets, all the features are scaled. They have the same scale. So basically I'm not gonna have one feature that dominates the other feature. So to do that, we are going to cover two different techniques or strategies. So the first strategy is what we call it normalization. So normalization is conducted to ensure that features could range between zero and one. So all I'm looking for is to go back here and take a look at the interest rates, employment, S&P 500, and just make sure that all of them range between zero and one. So min max values here would be zero one, zero one, zero one. That's the objective. So let's learn how we can actually calculate that. So to do that, this is simply the equation. I'm going to get any number. I'm going to subtract the minimum value and then I'm going to divide by the maximum minus min. So I'm x minus x min divide by x max minus x min and that is going to give me the updated or normalized value. So luckily I don't want to go and actually write like you know like a large code large lines of code that contains or kind of perform that process or even write this equation. All I need to do is to basically leverage a library known as scikit-learn library. And if you guys hang in there until the end of the video, I'm going to show you a detailed video explanation where we're gonna walk you through an actual code that perform the exact same process here in scikit-learn. So these are simply how the three lines of code where we can use them to perform what we call it min-max scalar. So min-max scalar is simply normalization. So what we do first is we say from sklearn.preprocessing, I'm going to import my min max scalar class. And then I instantiate an object out of my class. I say scalar equals to min max scalar. And then I grab that object, apply the fit transform method on it, pass it along the data. And that data here is going to be stock underscore df, which stands for data frame. And then I'm going to override that data and just generate a normalized or scaled output. Okay, so let's take a look at an output and an actual example from a normalization process. So if you guys see here, here I have my pair plot. This is simply the different uh, scatter plots between employment and S&P 500, and essentially with every, every feature that I have in my data. So after you perform normalization, so here, this is the raw data, this is the normalized data. What you guys notice is the range and the scale of my data is completely different now. Now I, employment used to range between 40 and 70. Now it range between zero and one. If you check out interest rates, same deal. Interest rates used to be between 1.5 and three, and now it's between zero and one. So essentially, if you take a look at the normalization process output, all what I'm doing is I'm scaling my data to range between zero and one. If you take a look at the statistical summary of the data, you will notice that here I had the minimum value of the interest rate was 1.5, maximum was three. If you check out interest rates, now it's between zero and one. Same deal as well for employment, it's between zero and one and S&P 500 between zero and one. And that's the main objective of the normalization process. 
So let me show you an actual example where we go and actually substitute in this equation, kind of go through a bunch of runs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use four sample data points. I'm going to grab, again, that's from the raw data. I'm going to grab a random number that will be 2206. I'm going to grab the average value. I'm going to grab the maximum and the minimum. Okay, so these again are, I've been able to obtain from that table, right? And let's go ahead and let's pick maybe that randomly selected number, which is 2206, and go and substitute in this equation. So if I substitute in this equation, you will notice that 2206 minus the minimum value, which is 1800, divided by maximum minus minimum, which is again 3000 minus 1800. And what I'm going to get is 0.338. So I'm gonna go here and put that value here. So 2206 in the raw data has an equivalent of 0.338 in that scaled or normalized version of that data. What if I substitute the average? Well, if you take the average, put it here, again, run through it, you will end up with 0.432. If you grab the maximum value, which is 3000, and you substitute here, you will notice that the value here, the normalized value will be one. If you grab the 1800 and you put 1800 here, 1800 minus 1800 will be zero. And that's why you will get zero here in the output. So basically, again, the objective of the normalization process is to transform the min max value from whatever number that is to be between zero and one. And that's what I'm getting here. And I was able to confirm that again by substituting in this equation. Okay, what about standardization? Well, standardization is conducted to transform the data to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Please note that this is drastically different compared to normalization, which is what we covered before. And standardization process as well is known as what we call the Z-score normalization. And essentially we try to shift our data to have an average or a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Okay, so what about the equation? The equation is simple. I simply get, get any data point, I subtract the average, so this is the average or the mean value of my distribution of my data, and then divided by the sigma, which is my standard deviation. So here, if you go ahead and see how we can actually perform that in scikit-learn library, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say from sklearn.preprocessing, I'm going to import the standard scalar, and then I'm going to instantiate an object here. So I'm going to say scalar equals to standard scalar. And then I'm going to apply the fit transform method on my object, pass it along the old data or the raw data to generate a brand new data set. And that is going to be my standardized data set. So let's take a look at an actual example. So what you guys see here on the left hand side, that's again the raw data. On the right hand side here, that's the standardized data after we did the transformation. So what you guys notice is here, the raw data for employment, for example, range between 40 and 70. In the standardized form, it ranges between minus like three and three, some, somewhere along those lines. And this is quite important. When we perform the standardization process, we don't care about the min and max value. We care about the average of the distribution or the mean of the distribution and the standard deviation of that distribution. So what you guys notice here is if you check out or kind of plot the statistical summary about my data, you will notice that here the average was 2.2 in my raw data. In my updated standardized form, it becomes everywhere becomes zero. All the mean becomes zero. If I get the standard deviation, well, the standard deviation becomes all of them becomes one. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So let's take a look at an actual example to kind of go again, select four random points and just go and substitute in this equation. So here I have a randomly selected value of 2206. If I substitute 2206 minus 2319 divided by 193, I will end up with point, uh, 0.583. I'm just going to put it here. If I grab the average value, which is 2319, and I substitute in this equation, 2319 minus 2319, which is the mean, I will get zero. And that's the overall intent here. The idea is the output here was going to be zero, okay? And of course, the maximum value could be any anything. It could be 3.5 here, for example, and the minimum is gonna be minus 2.67. So always remember, kind of the key takeaway is a normalized data set 
will always range between 0 and 1. However, a standardized data set will always have a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1, but it can have any upper and lower values. Okay, We don't really care about the upper and lower values. We care about the average or the mean will be 0. Standard deviation or the dispersion away from the mean is going to be 1. Okay. So now to the big question, okay, when should I use standardization versus normalization? When, why do I even need it? Well, so scaling, which includes standardization and normalization or, or normalization per se, is required when you use any machine learning algorithm that requires you to calculate the gradient. So if basically when we train any machine learning model, let's say an artificial neural network, in order to update the network weights, I need to calculate the error and I need to propagate the error back, okay, using the gradients essentially to update my weights. And whenever I do that, I need to make sure that I'm performing the scaling. And the reason is, is because I'm calculating that gradient, I wanted to make sure that all the features have the same scale. So I won't have a feature that will dominate the other feature. Okay. And Okay, what, what examples, for example, can you share me with me examples? Well, I have linear regression, logistic regression, artificial neural networks, deep neural networks. All of that will require you to calculate the gradient. And if you require that, you need to make sure that as part of the pre-processing phase that you are running or performing standardization or normalization. Please note that scaling is actually not really required when you perform distance-based or tree-based algorithms. For example, if you're using k-means clustering, if you're using support vector machines, if you're doing k-nearest neighbors, decision trees, random forest, xgboost, all these algorithms, which are distance-based and kind of or tree-based algorithms, we don't really need to calculate the gradient, so we don't care about standardization or normalization. You can just go ahead and run the algorithm. All right, so when to use standardization versus normalization? So generally speaking, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to that. In case of artificial neural networks, for example, normalization is preferred since we don't assume any data distribution beforehand. So in general, standardization is preferred when data follows a Gaussian distribution. So if you have data that follows Gaussian distribution, it's better kind of like, again, general guideline to use standardization. And Standardization is preferred over normalization when there are a lot of outliers in the data. Okay, all right, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and shift to the Jupyter Notebook and show you guys a detailed code where we are going to grab data set and perform standardization and normalization on it from scratch. Again, if you guys uh, like this video so far, I would really appreciate it if you just give it a like and subscribe as well for more videos. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we go. Now I have my Jupyter notebook and here I have the uh, standardization versus normalization basic process. First, I'm going to go ahead and import all our key libraries and data sets. So first I'm going to import pandas as pandas is primarily used for data frame manipulation and it's gonna be really powerful when we deal with tabular data. Okay, again, think of it as Excel basically in Python environment here. And then I'm going to import matplotlib and seaborn. And matplotlib and seaborn are primarily used for data visualization. And if you press shift and enter on your keyboard, that is going to run or execute the cell. And once you see a number here, that indicates that that cell ran successfully. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use pandas to read my CSV file. So I'm going to say pandas pd dot read underscore CSV. And then I'm going to grab the S&P 500 stock data. And if you press shift enter, here we go. Here I have my data. Here I have my interest rate. I have my employment. And I also have the S&P 500 price. Please note that basically these three columns here are at our different scales, right? And that's why I wanted to actually scale them up. I wanted to normalize them or standardize them. So let me show you. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and plot the pair plot. So if I say sns.pairplot, sns is simply, um, again, seaborn, and pairplot is really powerful plot, as you guys can see here, that can show me a different scatter plots between every single feature that I have in my data. For example, here I have interest rates versus S&P 500 price, and all these circles here, all these dots, 
that's every data point that I have in my data. So for example, if I go back, every row will basically be here a data point, essentially. Here I have employment versus S&P 500 and so on. So what you guys notice is, well, the range here, the scale basically is different, right? So here I have the interest rate range between 1.5 and 3, employment range between 40 and 50 and so on. If you wanted to basically plot the statistical summary about the data, all I need to do is to say, grab my pandas data frame and apply the describe method on it. And it will generate a table like this. And here I'm just saying I'm rounding all the values to two basically uh, data points here. So what you guys notice is I have the minimum value is 1.5 to 3 for interest rates. The employment value here is between 40 and 70. And the S&P 500 is between 1800 and 3000. So let's go ahead and learn how to do normalization in scikit-learn. So as you, if you guys recall, normalization just scales the data to range between 0 and 1. That's all I'm looking for. And this is the equation. I grab any number, I subtract the minimum, and then divide it by the max minus minimum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the data again. Here I read the data again. And that's how you perform normalization in scikit-learn. What you do is you say from sklearn, the pre-processing, I'm going to import min max scalar. And then you're going to instantiate an object here out of my class. And then you're going to apply the fit transform method on my object, pass it along the pandas data frame, and then overwrite your pandas data frame again. And if you press shift enter, it might take some time. Here we go. And because here, when we do the standard scalar, is uh, it's going to convert it basically into an NumPy array. And that's why I just need to shift it back to a pandas data frame. So here I'm using the pandas data frame constructor method, pass it along here my stock DF, and I'm just kind of think of it, I'm recreating my pandas data frame again with my normalized data set. Here I have the interest rates, employment, and S&P 500, the name of the columns. Shift and enter. And what I could do next is if I check out or plot the pair plot, okay, for my data and the statistical summary of my data as well, what you guys notice here is, well, the employment values and interest rate values and the S&P 500, all of them right now range between 0 and 1, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So basically, it looks like the actual operation, the normalization operation was successful. Let's confirm that here with our um, describe using the describe method. What you guys notice here is the minimum value for all of them are zeros and the maximum values for all of them are 1, which is perfect. Okay. Let's go ahead and learn how to do standardization in sklearn or scikit-learn. So as I mentioned, what we do here is we try to set the mean value to be zero and the standard deviation to be equals to one. And this is the equation kind of we substitute in. We get any value, we subtract the average or the mean, and then we divide by the standard deviation. If you run it, shift and enter, here we go. And what I could do here is I'm going to use sklearn. I'm going to say from sklearn.preprocessing. I'm going to import standard scalar. And then I'm going to instantiate an object called it scalar. And then I'm going to use the fit transform method on my object, which is scalar, pass it along stock DF to generate my new updated pandas data frame. Shift and enter. And then shift and enter again to create our pandas data frame here using the data frame constructor method. And if you press two shift enters again, you will run the pair plot, here we go. So what you guys notice here is when we actually plot the pair plot for my data, you would notice that the min and maximum values right now, actually, we, we don't know, we don't care about it. So you notice that the min max value, for example, for interest rate range between like, let's say minus three to let's say three. Here, the S&P 500 price was like between minus two to let's say 3.5, something like that. And the idea here is, again, when we do standardization, all we care about is the average, the mean, and the standard deviation. Min-max value could be anything, and that's what we can confirm here as well. So you would notice that the mean is all zeros, standard deviation is one in all of them. However, if you check out the min and max value, you notice that they could be essentially any value. Okay? All right. So that's it. That's simply all I have for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and see you guys in future videos.